Okay, number eight. So by writing sec theta equals one over cos theta, show that the derivative of sec theta equals sec tan. Now, my tip for these kind of questions, yeah? Every time you got a sec, a cosec, or a cot, always, and I mean it, always rewrite them in terms of sine, cos, and tan, okay? It's because differentiating those lot are very easy, even though, you're, even though you're probably told how to differentiate them. Now, looking at this question, we want to differentiate sec, and it told us it's equal to 1 over cos, okay? Now, I would use this because this can be easily solved using the quotient rule. And remember, the quotient rule tells us that we need two variables, a u, which is the top, and a v, which is the bottom. So we can say let u equal 1 and v equal cos theta. And now differentiating both of them, you're going to get 1, you get 0 because it's a constant. And differentiating cos is easy. It's going to be negative sine. <clears throat> and, if you, and the reason of these two is that differentiating cos and sine always cycles back to each other. And that's it. Now, to use, a, to use the quotient rule, you simply look at both the products and you, 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 you just draw lines like this. So V times U prime minus U times V prime and all over V squared. Okay. Okay. So therefore the solution is going to be, so D over D theta. I know you just put this out. is going to equal to what I just said. So V times U prime. So cos theta times zero is zero minus. So remember you minus them. U times V prime, so 1 times minus sine theta, so it would be minus, and you got, because you already have a minus, there will be plus sine theta. And all of this is over V squared, so cos theta squared, or cos squared theta. <coughs> and of course, ignoring the zero, you got sine over cos squared theta. Now, to make it look like the right-hand side, just, just try and partition this. Think about how to get tan. Because we know tan is equal to sine over cos. So just separating this as um, sine theta over cos theta times 1 over cos theta. We can see that this quantity here gives us a tan. And the right side, guys, gives us a nice little sec theta. Boom. And that's it. Okay, guys. Now let's move on to part B. Okay. So given that x equals e to the sec y. Ooh, so x is a subject. Show that dy over dx, no, this is not dx over dy, equals the right-hand side, where this gx here is a function of ln x. Okay, so this one looks like we, sh we should go ahead and just differentiate, right? Now, be careful. When you differentiate this, be careful not to write dy over dx, because x is the main variable. So this should be dx. Oops, was my pen? dx over dy, okay? Now, when you do this, this means that you're going to start making y the main variable. So, let's go ahead and try and differentiate e to the sec y. Now, if you guys are not sure, every time you differentiate um, a power, uh, differentiate something that's an exponential, you always drop the power on the, on the ground. So, differentiating sec um, is going to be sec and tan. So, it'll be on the ground, sec y, tan y. And then you just copy the exponential, as always. Now, all we want to do is just flip these guys over to get dy over dx, yeah? So, this means dy over dx must equal 1 over everything I just said. Okay. Now, here comes the, the weird bits. So, one thing we have to note is that everything inside a function has been converted in terms of x, yeah? And we've got y's here. So, looking back in the beginning, we noticed that x equals e to the power sec y, right? So we can already say that these guys here, this e bit, must be x, okay? That's cool. So what about sec y and tan y? Well, if we go ahead and just, you know, rearrange this for a second, I mean, let's, let's, just, let's just go ahead and drop sec y to the ground. To do this, we can take ln on both sides. So let's take ln's. So if you do that, you're going to have ln x here. If you take ln on the right, you're going to have um, just sec y because ln and e cancel out. So that's done. So now we can say that sec y here, is ln x but what about tan y or oh, <laughs> all right tay. so as for tan y this is something we just have to try and spot here um, you could use another form another relationship so remember how we had them the trig identity we had sine squared uh, let's say sine squared y plus cos squared y must equal one you can make one in terms of second tan 
To do that, all you do is just differentiate by cos squared. And if you, you know, if you divide everything by cos squared, this is going to become a 1. Oops, sorry, that's going to become a tan squared. Because sine squared over cos squared is tan. Cos squared over cos squared is 1. And 1 over uh, cos squared will give us sec squared. Okay? And since we know what sec squared is, it's going to be ln x all squared. So let's go ahead and sort out here. So this means tan squared y plus 1 equals ln x squared. And now making tan y the subject, minus 1 the square root. You've got tan y equals the square root of ln x squared minus 1. And I think that's it, you know, because it says gx has to be a, a function of that. So let's go ahead and just replace the tan y with that. So you're going to have the square root of um, ln x squared minus 1. Okay, so let's stick this uh, together for now. So this means dy dx is going to equal 1 over um, ln x root ln x all squared minus 1 x. Okay. Now, going back to the original function, notice how only x should be outside the square root. So, because of that, we should kind of um, rewrite this ln x here. And to do, that, to do that, you can, of course, just square root and then square root. Because that literally gives the same uh, result. So, this means we're going to have 1 over the massive square root sign of ln x squared from the first one times the second law. ln x squared minus 1. And of course, you can stick x over here, outside, uh, just outside square root. So it'll be 1 over the square root of all of that times x.